Dear friends, last week I had begun a series called Holy Week Homilies for the Homebound. The response was very encouraging, so I thought I'd continue with giving you a few reflections up to Pentecost. So for the second Sunday of Easter, our theme will be Trinitarian Commission and Christian Communion. Let's begin with a hymn, a very simple hymn to the Trinity, Father we love you, we worship and adore you, glorify your name in all the earth and then we'll sing Jesus and then we'll sing Spirit, we love you, we worship you, we adore you. We will take two readings. The first reading, which is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, and then from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. They, that is the converts, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of our Lord. Let us now listen to the gospel passage from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. 
If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of our Lord. Friends, I'd like to comment on three points. The first one is from the Gospel reading. Last Sunday you heard the beginning of this chapter 20 of the Gospel of John with three disciples, that is Peter and John and Mary Magdalene go to the tomb. So they find the tomb empty and they believe that Jesus is risen. But there is still some confusion and some doubt. So today's passage begins with the disciples being locked up, very much like you and me today, locked up because of COVID-19. So there they are, still not sure what exactly has happened. There's a little bit of confusion. There's also fear of the Jews. And it is amidst this fear, amidst this confusion, that Jesus breaks in. What a beautiful greeting. Peace be with you. This peace of the risen Lord, which Jesus says twice, peace be with you. And then Jesus blows on them. This is the breath of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Genesis at the start, you have the void, the dark and the deep, and the Spirit of God hovering over the dark, the deep, creating new life. And here's once again the Spirit of God blowing into the disciples. And then Jesus says, as the Father sent me, so I send you, receive the Holy Spirit. I call this a Trinitarian cum mission. In Latin, the cum or the com means with. It is the mission of God which is entrusted to Jesus and Jesus entrusted to his disciples and through his disciples, Peter, James, John, Mary, Magdalene, Jesus entrusts the mission to you and to me. We are missionaries with the Holy Trinity. The second point I'd like to make is from the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now once again, this is a very beautiful reading. We know that the Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 begins with the Pentecost. So Peter, James, John, all the disciples are full of the Holy Spirit. Full of the Spirit, they begin preaching the good news and everybody can understand what they are saying in their own language. Then Peter, who was very fearful, who was all confused, here you find him preaching very boldly Jesus is the Messiah. And he point blank tells people of the Sanhedrin, the high priests, etc., the elders, that you crucify Jesus, but Jesus has been raised to life. He is the Messiah. Hearing this news, all the people are very enthused. They want to come to know Jesus. They want to follow the path, the marga of Jesus. And there, the line just before the passage that we've read, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 41 it is mentioned that about 3,000 believers were added to their numbers. Now, this new community, let's call it a new church, begins to do three things based on what the apostles taught them and based on what they knew of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What are the three things? First, they were listening to the apostles' teaching. The apostles were preaching and they were listening and learning from the apostles. Second point which is very beautiful over there is the breaking of bread. What is this breaking of bread? It is the primitive form of the Eucharist. There was no church building as such. They met in their homes and they were breaking bread, remembering Jesus' last supper, how he broke bread and he distributed to his disciples. The third thing which they did was the sharing of goods. It is mentioned that they sold their possession and whatever proceeds they got, they distributed among the poor so that there was no one needy among them all. I can summarize that in three C's, the letter C. The first one, you can say, is the creed. That is what the disciples were teaching them, the creed about God, about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit, about life, death, about the resurrection. The second C we can talk about is the cult, that is the liturgy or the sacrament in its primordial form, the breaking of the bread and the prayers. And the third thing we can talk about is conduct, that is their behavior. 
He was so full of the spirit, so full of this communion, so to say, the union among themselves, that there was not a single person in need. They sold their goods and the proceeds they distributed to everybody. What a beautiful community of sharing, caring and love. We can certainly call this communion, Christian communion, an ideal society, an ideal community. And the third point I'd like to make is that of the mission of reconciliation. When Jesus breathed on the disciples, he said one thing, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the message of reconciliation, the ministry which has been given to the apostles and the disciples and through them to you and to me. You and I, dear sisters and brothers, are supposed to be ministers of reconciliation, reconciling everybody into one family, reconciling ourselves to God and finally reconciling ourselves to Mother Earth so that we have this beautiful Trinitarian communion, so to say. So what can we do very practically by listening to these two readings? I would suggest three activities, so to say, which you and I can do today. The first is, are we aware of the Apostles' teaching? I know these days you are reading the Bible at home, you are reading about the Gospels, you are listening to what the bishops, the priests are saying. This is the creed, what you are being taught. So maybe every Sunday when you go to church, you recite the creed, take the creed line by line. I believe in God the Father, I believe in Jesus, I believe in the Holy Spirit, I believe in the church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. And explain, parents, explain to your children what the creed really means. The second, the breaking of bread. Now every Sunday we go to church to have this breaking of bread, this holy communion. But today, because of the lockdown, you are in your homes, but you can break bread, sitting around the table, sharing of the meal. Maybe the elder children feeding the younger siblings. Preparing one loaf maybe and breaking and sharing, sharing the meal, whether it be a chapati or it be a dosa or whatever. That would be the second thing that we can do very practically. The third thing you are already doing, I'm sure about this, that many of you are donating money, you are giving food, you are giving grain to those who are in need in your neighborhood. It's very beautiful that the church at this particular point of time is reaching out, is reaching out very beautifully, very generously through their donations, through the sharing of themselves, through the giving of space also to migrants, to people who are poor daily wage earners. This is something that we can continue to do so that when people look at us, they will say, this is an ideal Christian community. So let us remember these three things and let us celebrate with great joy, despite the lockdown, despite the worries that we might have, to remember that we are missionaries of the resurrection, Trinitarian mission, missionaries of the Trinity and we are also in communion, so-called Holy Communion with each other, beginning in the family, spreading out to the neighborhood, to those in need and finally to Mother Earth. So with great joy in our hearts, let us repeat this hymn that we sang in the beginning, Father we love you, Jesus we love you and Spirit we love you. Worship and 
and adore you glorify your name in all the earth glorify your name glorify your Let us pray. Lord God of love, Father, Son, and Spirit, we praise and thank you for embracing us into your inner life and for entrusting us with a mission of love and reconciliation. Make us feel your paternal providence and maternal care. Help us to walk faithfully with our crucified, risen Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, Come upon each one of us, molding us into a new creation, co-workers with Christ and co-creators of a new world. We are locked up during this time of the COVID-19 crisis. We offer up our doctors, caregivers and other selfless servants who run risks to promote life. We know that you, God of life, will break into our lockdown and send us out refreshed renewed and eager to reconcile all people to you, to one another and to Mother Earth. May we always love you, adore you and glorify your name in all the earth. Amen.